Have you ever been frustrated by low resolution project like this one shown in this image? Well, you in luck, because today we are going to explore a really interesting topic. How and why to increase seismic resolution? We'll also deal with the question of why we have low resolution projects in the first place. But that's not all. We're going to take a trip through a range of methods used to improve seismic resolution, starting with the hardware level approaches and ending with the latest and greatest in machine learning. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. I am Ruslan, CTO of a software company that is pushing the boundaries of what is possible with AI in geoscience. Our collection of AI tools will streamline your workflow and provide new perspective on your data. Want to see it in action? Click on the link in the comments to learn more. With the increasing demand for oil and gas, it is more important than ever to improve seismic resolution. By doing so, we can more accurately map subsurface structures and make more informed decisions about which drill. High resolution images can help to identify the smaller features or events in the subsurface that might be missed by lower resolution data. That is why it's important to know about the concept of vertical and horizontal resolution. These measurements determine the level of details in the image, both in terms of depth and space. Vertical resolution, also known as the temporal resolution, refers to the minimum separation in time between two reflections arriving at the same surface that allows us to detect each reflector separately. The rain length criterion is a principle used to determine the minimal thickness of a subsurface layer that can be distinguished or resolved using seismic data. It is based on the idea that for two subsurface reflectors to be considered separate, their diffraction patterns must be separated by at least a certain distance. This distance is known as the tuning thickness. It is equal to the minimal layer thickness for which it is possible to separate two boundaries by seismic signal. For wavelengths, the resolution limit is approximately lambda over 4, where lambda is the wavelength of a dominant frequency. This means that for a wavelength with a dominant frequency of 80 Hz and seismic velocity of 3000 meters per second, the minimal thickness of a layer that can be resolved is 9.3 meters. Lateral resolution, also known as the spatial resolution, refers to the minimal lateral distance between the two geologic objects that can be imaged individually. Lateral resolution of the seismic survey is determined by the geometry of the survey, including spacing between the seismic source and receivers, as well as the frequency content of the seismic waves. When conducting a seismic survey, many factors that can affect the overall resolution of the image we gather. These factors include the type of equipment we use, the geology, and many other factors that can affect both vertical and horizontal resolution. One important factor to consider is the frequency content of the seismic source. Lower frequency content produces longer wavelength seismic waves, which can provide lower resolution images but may also be able to penetrate deeper into the subsurface. This is because wavelength is a fundamental property of a wave, and it's the distance between successive points of equal phase, like crest to crest, completing one cycle. Another factor to consider is the density and velocity of subsurface formations. Lower density and velocity formations will reflect seismic waves less efficiently, resulting in low resolution images. Additionally, size and spacing of receivers can also play a huge role in overall resolution. Sparse spacing between receivers can degrade the seismic resolution, and the small distance between the first and last receiver in a line can damage lateral resolution. Signal-to-noise ratio is also a critical factor to consider. A lower signal-to-noise ratio can degrade the quality of the seismic data and the resulting resolution, since it requires more iteration of CDP folding. CDP folding is a standard technique that achieves signal enhancement at the cost of noise. By summation process of several traces reflected from the same subsurface depth points, but with different offsets. I hope you are finding this video on improving seismic resolution informative and useful. If you are, please like and share it to help reach more people who could benefit from this information. There are a few ways we can approach improving seismic resolution. First. Let's talk about the hardware level methods. High density acquisition, as the name suggests, 
generally increases the horizontal resolution by acquiring a densely sampled dataset using a larger number of sources and receivers. We gotta mention it here, it is costly in data acquisition and processing because of a sample density resulting in a big dataset to work on. Broadband seismic is the cutting edge technique that improves the vertical resolution of the seismic data by recording full range of frequencies, including low and high frequency parts. This results in a more detailed and accurate image of the subsurface, allowing for the imaging of the subsurface features that would be missed with traditional narrow band methods. The cost of this technique is higher than the traditional methods due to the needs of specialized equipment and advanced data processing. But the benefits outweigh the cost in certain situations, making it a valuable tool for the industry. Great, so we've talked about the hardware level. Let's move on to analytical methods. Migration is a technique that corrects the distortion of seismic waves as they travel through the subsurface, resulting in a higher resolution and accurate images. There are different types of migration and here is an example of how different methods might affect the seismic resolution. Full waveform inversion is an advanced technique that is using entire seismic waveform to reconstruct high resolution subsurface properties, providing a more detailed and accurate picture compared to the traditional methods. However, due to the ill pose problem and non-uniqueness of the inverse problem, large-scale practical applications have been blocked by a series of challenges. FWI is challenging and competentially intensive technique but can greatly improve resolution and accuracy. We are moving to impedance inversion. Impedance inversion is a simpler and faster method that involves converting seismic data from the time domain to the frequency domain to calculate the acoustic impedance. The resulting impedance model can provide information of the subsurface lithology and fluid content but may also lack detailed structural information when compared with the FWI method. The technique requires high level of experience to produce a reliable results, but the payoff is a higher resolution image. One way to achieve improved resolution is through a technique called deconvolution. It is a powerful tool used to remove distortion caused by the seismic source and the propagation of seismic waves. This allows for more accurate representation of subsurface features resulting in a high resolution images. But it's not as simple as it sounds. There is a delicate balance of removing noise, but not introducing any artifact. Filtering is a tool for removing noise and unwanted features from seismic data, resulting in a high resolution images. One technique that can be used is the inverse Q filtering. It is the process that amplifies the high frequency content of the data by dividing the seismic data by a Q model, which is a measure of how much energy is lost as seismic waves passes through the subsurface. Another technique from many of them is the spectral whitening, which enhances the frequency content of the data by applying frequency dependent gain. This results in a seismic image with better resolution and detail. Interpolation is a technique that can be used for increasing seismic resolution in some sense. It is important to remember that the technique does not generate new data. Instead, it fills in gaps with the approximate values based on the surrounding data. Awesome! We've covered the hardware level and analytical methods. Now let's talk about machine learning methods. This is where the things get really exciting. With advancement in technology, we are able to use machine learning algorithms to improve the resolution even further. Super resolution is a machine learning technique that can enhance the resolution of seismic data beyond what is possible with traditional methods, allowing for detection even smaller features in the subsurface. No worry, I will back up my statement with the research papers. The first paper by Jin Tao Li, published in 2021 proposed a multi-scale convolutional neural network model to learn high-low resolution image pairs. The results show that this method is superior to traditional methods in terms of peak signal-to-noise ratio and structural similarity. Another recent paper by Q Feng Sun, published in 2022, proposed a random noise suppression and super-resolution reconstruction algorithm based on generative adversarial networks which improved the quality of seismic cross-section and made the observation of geological structures such as fractures clear. We've covered three classes of methods for improving seismic resolution. 
hardware level, analytical and machine learning. It is important to note here that all of these methods might work together to get the most accurate and detailed image possible. Besides the problem with seismic resolution, we also have the problem of coherent and random noise. I invite you to check out the video which explains a paper that successfully cleans seismic data from random noise using unsupervised machine learning techniques.